guys, welcome back to the shop, and today we're looking, we're taking another look at these, uh, at this, at this Ducati crankshaft, and um, we're actually going to talk about uh, the actual failure itself. Do I have a pointer that can be easily seen? Yes, there we go. That'll do. So uh, there'll be a lot of pictures in this because you know camera wise and all the rest of it so what we can see is obviously we've had a fracture um, but this is actually what we call a fatigue failure and fatigue um, so in a sense in regards to this we there's two failures in a sense there's the fracture obviously this is just thing or in other words in layman's terms fucking broken and um, but this is actually a fatigue failure. Now, fatigue failure is when, um, in layman's terms, it's it's failed over time. This didn't go bang and it all of a sudden exploded and cracked. Um, it would have felt like that, but the failure was over time. Um, how much time? Eh, don't know. This is probably um, over quite a long period of time. But... Um, I've done a, a CAD model of this, so I'll show you some pictures of that as well. Um, but there are signs that we can look at. Now, when you have a failure like this, ideally, the person or the engineer doing the failure analysis should be the person that takes it apart. Now, that very, very rarely, rarely happens. You know, this breaks, something goes wrong, it goes crunchy, maybe it shoots out of run. You go, what the fuck? And you take it apart and you go, oh, fucking hell. Why did this fail? Let's send it away to have it, you know, have a failure analysis done on it. And just by taking it apart, you probably, you know, fucked a few things. Why? Well, because these surfaces give you a um, the witness marks. You know, this is like a seat, a seat, a, a crime scene for fuck's sake. And you know, anyone disturbing any of the evidence and stuff like that can actually skew results. And if you put this together like this, wrap it all up and ship it, which it actually was shipped like this, um, this banging around like this can actually, you know, destroy some of the evidence. Um, but sometimes it's inadvertible. And with this, this had fractured and then carried on spinning and it's actually done that itself. So sometimes you just can't get around it. And with a crankshaft with that, you've either seen or you're going to see same kind of thing applies additional damage happens afterwards but what can we see so what we can see is that we have features to look at and we must resume it now bring this into the shot there we go so we've got both lovely so what we can see is that we have a fracture and the points of note, the points that you have to, you know, take note of, points of interest, is that this hole is actually fractured through the hole. That's quite important. Um, we have the oil feed hole here, and we're actually looking as as well of exactly where it's fractured. So it's fractured at this side here, and when we look on the alternate side, you can see that it tried to fracture. It's on its way towards um, this other oil passage, the actual uh, cross drilling hole that's been blanked off. You can see the other hole here that matches up with this one. And um, this breaching here through this hole is actually also important. We'll get to that in a minute. But we can see there's a big curl of metal off here to this side. It's taken it all on there. So uh, we've also, before we move on, sorry, we've got a crack there as well. You can see that little crack in there. So um, what we want to do first is look for the smallest cross section. We always want to look for the smallest cross section because the smallest cross section is usually the weakest part. Uh, not always, but most of the time. So, what we can see is we can see what they call a riverbed, which is this bit, as you can see there, and it matches up there. This is what we call a, a name for it is a riverbed, and. Um, this goes directly from the outside surface directly to this hole through the center of it and then to this hole so this is generally where our crack prop propagation where our crack starts it usually probably starts from the center here outwards um because the forces are higher 
they basically go to infinity as you get to the center um and the center would be about there and you can see this crack kind of goes nearly towards the center and you can see that there's this big break here which is again propagating from the center um the center of the actual shaft itself so uh the other thing is we have benchmarks this is what we call benchmarks um that radiate outwards like this which means that generally because this is the thinner section this is 5.63 this crack probably started at the center here. It could have started here, but the thing is this is directly on the radius. It's literally on the radius. And the you put radii on the insides. You can't see that very well. You put radi a radius on the inside of here um, as a stress reliever. And we're going to, I'm going to show you how much of a difference that makes uh, in an experiment we're going to do real soon where if you just have a 90 degree you can't see that a 90 degree or you have like a soft radius in there uh, how much of a difference as a percentage that can make but basically it splits probably split outwards going both ways like this and like this um, this one is the shorter distance so this one's going to make it there quicker not only that is the speed of this steel um, when you put a torsional load on this, there isn't that much torsional load on the actual pin itself, but this is the interface between a lighter mass and a heavier mass. But you can see all these benchmarks here, so basically this shows you that it's a fatigue. If you look at this section here, and it's quite difficult to get it in the light well. There we go. You can see that there's fuck all benchmark in here. So this is where we this is what we call a um a shock fracture or a um what's the other word for it it's, a, it's the ultimate failure basically this is an instant failure so basically what this has done is is that it's a bit like wood it's it it splits a bit and 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 every time it splits if you think about the lines in my finger there so it splits to that one and it splits to that one every time it goes like that and splits and then relaxes it makes one of these little benchmarks this is basically where the crystals are splitting. So it splits all the way up to there. And this will slightly oxidize and stuff like that. It also makes literally a ridge. Um, and then basically it just splits, 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 until we come to the ultimate failure here, which goes, fuck off. This just becomes it overloaded. It's an overload failure. That's the word I was thinking of. It's an overload failure where it's just like, right, you've split enough and bang. And it's the same thing with splitting logs. You know, you split, 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 and you get so far until basically the leverage of all that material trying to pull apart just pulls the whole thing completely apart so as you can see we've actually got like a fan pattern where the the benchmarks run outwards like that so because obviously if you're trying to split from here to here this is the weak point so these are going to follow that and then you get this riverbed cracking here like that as it basically starts to come apart and um, this in its sense is a benchmark it's actually higher this side than it is this side um, and obviously there's a lot less material on if you split it that way along the line there's a lot more less material on this side um, you'll see that there's a lot of this burring over and curling and stuff like this a big curl there that will be these two parts clacking together as the thing is still spinning around because this failed probably at very high speed and you know it just fucking give up the ghost uh, separate, separate crack here generally this is a grain boundary issue um, unless and I can't see any witness mark saying that that's had an additional clamp there is a bit of hammering nibbling there possibly a lot of this stuff you you know you have to look at the grain structure under the microscope and stuff and I don't have uh, an electron microscope to get all of to really really see what's going on um, but why is this failed this way well generally what happens is is that this crankshaft is put together like so let me zoom back out I need a word for the reverse of master of zoom and every time the piston fires which is where the, the greatest loads are on this when it fires down like this and it will be a perpendicular not a perpendicular angle it will be an offset angle it actually be that way um, like that because the oil passages there basically <laughs> trying to keep it together fuck me when the piston fires down like this and the crankshaft pushes against it there like that the whole thing the whole thing is fixed at the bearings so these two sides here here and here 
is fixed there. So the whole thing wants to do this. It wants to deflect downwards. So if very briefly, if I just draw that out, chada! You have a fixed point here for your main journals. Then you have your webs like this. And then you have your crank pin like this. And we are applying a force here and there is nothing beneath here to support it. So in a sense you get a bending moment. This is where you are fixed here. So the whole thing is going to want to splay out and bend this pin like that. Or as a clearer example, that's what it used to look like. And now the whole thing wants to splay out like this. So there's your fixed point, fixed point on your bearings. And this is what you know puts load on your bearings every time that this thing fires. Now, when you try and bend this like this, your stress region, um, your strain region is right there in one of these corners and the weakest corner will shit the bed and um, cause a failure. Well, yeah, that, look, that looks exactly like that's happened. Now, with every single system, Anything, any system whatsoever, even this toothbrush, right? If you had something that was perfectly, uh, 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 um, let me try and think about it. Just say you've got a bolt like this, right? There is a section in this bolt somewhere that is weaker than the rest of it. It's impossible. It's like if you've got a thousand grains of sand, there is going to be one that is the heaviest, there is going to be the one that's the lightest, there's going to be the one that's the heavy, uh, widest, and there's going to be the one that's, you know, the 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 the, the 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 best arranged crystals and the one that's haphazard and all over the place you know that is just the way nature is there is always going to be you know one of your feet is longer than the other one of your eyes and ears and all the rest of it are longer or smaller or rounder or more ablate than the other blah 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 so as this has gone bang it's basically pushed the whole thing down as you push the whole thing down, obviously this is a massive exaggeration, this is where your strain is going to be the highest, right in here, and it's broke exactly there. Not only that is, but when we look at the cross section of this, you can see that if you are trying to split right here where the force is applied, we can actually see that that hole there and that line up there is actually at the angle of which um, peak pressure in your cylinder is achieved. Now, what can they do to alleviate this? Well, there's not much because literally they're this close. You would have to make a bigger crank pin. If you made a bigger crank pin, just say the radius of this um, flat surface here, this thrust surface here, which is for your conrod. Um, if you made your crank pin this big and then had that thrust surface out here, it makes the crankshaft heavy. It means that you're going to lose a bit of RPM and stuff, but it would strengthen this you know beyond it, it would always break like this if you kept on adding more and more force it would eventually break but if you could move this hole down a bit and have this here and basically make this a bit more even because you can see literally the distances between there and there where the break is this is a lot closer so this is your weakest region you'd expect it to break here and uh the crack actually happened on the fillet that's the worst thing that's literally the start of the radius um but it's still cracked you can see these benchmarks go outwards from here so this is probably right on that corner in that fillet um, like I say when you go to bend this thing like this um, this actually means that this entire region has been stretched it's not compression this is a tensile fillet it's basically been pulled like this and you pull it a crack appears and then that crack starts to propagate over time and you can see a bit of benchmarking up there it goes all the way up until you get to your ultimate failure here and you'll notice that this you know it's a bit rough and it's you know a bit of oxidization stuff but you'll notice that this top section here is really fucking shiny it's like glass and that's what happens when you get a grain boundary failure that has literally just followed the crystals that's just gone bang like that and it's a snap like glass and you might have snapped um really cheap what people call monkey metal but um, aluminium castings, or you might have snapped something like cast iron or something like that. This is a testament to how good this steel is. Even though this has been cast, you can see that this steel, um, very good quality steel, very well controlled, 
how they do the casting because you can see that this, like I said, is light glass. And if we snap that turbine blade in half, you probably kind of, well, apart from the hollow bits, but if you've got the, just say the Christmas tree bit at the bottom, if you snap that, it would snap like glass in a single crystal. This is obviously not a single crystal, but what I'm saying is, is that when you have better quality metals, they tend to break um, a bit more like glass. And we'll talk about that in the future. We'll snap some samples and see the difference between them. Um, but yeah, you know, this it's just it, it's it's almost like an inherent weak point. Oh, it is an inherent weak point. This cross drilling goes like this and this and I'll show you the CAD. It is just the thinnest part. So if we were to expect this to fail, we'd expect it to fail there. Unluckily for this guy's bike, it did exactly that. And when this let go, it would be absolutely fucking horrible. <laughs> absolutely fucking horrible um you know because this is a strong piece of steel but this just shows you in a sense some of the forces that are you know we're uh, playing with here when we go to higher horsepower and stuff like that um you know it's a, a wing and a prayer and if you look here you can see that actually that section there master of zoom try not wobble the camera too much Oh, just out of the range of the auto focus, you fucker. Right, <laughs> so you can see there's actually a shiny bit there. Now I can't see because I don't have a microscope here. That could be hammered like this. But I'm guessing... No, no, actually it's probably as polished on that one as well. These, as these two bits clack together, it basically hammers it flat. Um, but yeah, you know, it's... Uh, a failure right at the fillet though that's what's quite amazing it's right at the fillet can you you can't fucking see anything it's literally right on the fillet so even with that fillet it hasn't helped you could have a bigger fillet that could help and i'll do a simulation on it to show how much of a difference it would make um but generally a way to get around this would be to make your crank pin thicker if you were constantly busted that's the thing you know this is a, a one-off failure that happens now and then this isn't a failure that happens all the time it's quite common though that's not to say that it's not and to finish off we'll look at the forged crank this daddy we've had a look at before and that has the same kind of cracking as we've seen before you can see that crack that runs down there now that crack I did have a look, it stops halfway, but it actually starts there and cracks all the way around there and then stops. So again we've got that fillet, that radius in there that started to break. And uh, this thing's shit in the bed as well, so, you know, all is not good in the hood, Ducati. Um, you're going to have to pull your finger out a bit because really we don't want to be seeing failures like this. Hey Rod, I hope that does make sense. And I'll see you in a bit.